Hello and welcome to West Rail News. This edition we have two stories for you on West Rail's preparation for electrification. With a switch on of the Armidale line planned for June 18th, West Rail has launched a major safety campaign for primary school children. We also look at a changeover of a different kind when we take a look at head office's new telephone exchange and we have results of the viewers survey conducted last edition and much more. So stay with us, there's something for everyone. Our first story takes us to the launch of the electrification safety campaign to primary schools, which saw the birth of a cartoon character destined to become West Rail's mascot in the eyes of Perth school children. Now I'm your local magpie, and your friends all call me mags. You'll know me for me sense of fun, me pranks and games and gags. Occasionally I go too far, as you will shortly see. And end up with me feathers ruffled most uncomfortably. I've played me jokes on heaps of blokes from Perth to Broome and back. But I soon found out not to muck about when I'm down by the railway track. Especially with this brand new system brought in by West Rail. I sing this song to remind me of me electrifying tail. Max the Magpie was the centre of attention at East Victoria Park Primary School when West Rail officially launched its electrification safety campaign to children. The cheeky Mags was adopted because of his ability to keep the children's interest while getting across the vital safety message. West Rail's role is to educate the public on the safety aspects of electrification and the video starring Mags is part of a specially developed lesson package to educate children along the electrified rail corridors. We want to ensure that there's basic education of what that system will mean for the children when it comes into operation later this year. So we'll be teaching them the basic principles of the quicker and quieter electric trains and what they need to do to ensure that the hazards that are there are not a problem for them. West Rail's campaign included on-air appearances by the Commissioner to spread the safety message to all children. Um, about the safety element for the kids that live along the tracks and stuff. Yes, Todd, actually the new system is extremely safe. It's, uh, it's quiet, it's fast and it, it's safe, provided everybody uh, plays the game. Because, I, 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 you know, Kenny and myself, we've been talking about this, you know. Yep, yep, and yep, yep, we, yep. We, we agreed that it would be, it would be quieter. Right? Yep. We agreed that it would be faster. Yeah. Is that sure right? Sure Non-polluting. Non-polluting. Non-polluting, that's right. Cleaner. Absolutely. But and but cheaper, won't it, Dr. Jim? Oh, lot lot cheaper. I never thought of that. So it would be it would be cheaper. <laughs> no, the fares will be the same. Yeah. But uh, it'll be a heck of a lot better value for money. That's good. Get there faster. But of course. Fifty now... schools within a 1.5 kilometer radius of the Perth Armadale line have been invited to participate in the campaign with schools along the Midland and Fremantle lines targeted for visits early next year. So just remember, stay away from the overhead lines and keep safe. Come along, Mags, and watch that train. It's fast, it's quiet, so use your brain. You won't go crossing the tracks again. Mags is proving very popular in the classrooms. Midland Workshops have started production of a new wagon design, the XY, and our camera crew was there as the first was about to come off the production line. West Rail's Midland Workshops have produced a unique wagon to cater for the renamed Kooljaloo Joint Venture, which is now known as Tai West. The new wagons were designed by the engineering design section at Midland to meet some tough requirements. The result is the XY dual purpose wagon, capable of hauling mineral sands from Yushe to Quinana and backloading coal from Collie. The design and, and manufacturing has been quite good up until the final fit up of the, the, the doors, discharge doors and the, probably the uh, roof hatch at this moment hasn't been put on. But uh, there are only minor problems, which is uh, very good for design wise because for a first time a prototype wagon it, uh, it's no prototype it's just straight from the design office and uh, onto the, off the drawing board into the manufacturing and to capture that and build it only those minor problems is very good. Special features is the uh, loading hatch which has got two openings which uh, can uh, load mineral sands in one hatch area and then uh, the other hatch opens up to load coal and eight discharge outlets at the bottom all operated by air uh, which makes it a, a unique feature. Mineral sands requires careful loading through a small opening with strict dust controls while coal is usually dumped into large open wagons. 
This resulted in a dual loading hatch being developed to cater for both commodities, with hydraulically controlled bottom dump discharge doors for unloading. The 26-tonne wagons, with a total load capacity of 50 tonnes, are believed to be the first of their kind in Australia and are a credit to the design and construction teams at Midland. A total of 18 XY wagons will be built for the Thai West project, which is worth $4 million a year to Westrail. Was it a case of UFOs for motorists on Perth's Mitchell Freeway last month? Strange lights and police squad cars had early morning motorists wondering. But the activity was much more down to earth. Westrail, the police and main roads departments were conducting an exercise to discover the possible effects of train lights on road traffic. The northern suburbs line will run down the middle of the Mitchell Freeway and it's important that authorities know if the moving train lights will unduly bother the driving public. The test showed that the lights will cause no real problems for traffic. But Westrail will continue discussions with the police and main roads departments in the lead up to the commencement of the service to ensure that the light spillage is minimised. The northern suburbs rail link is planned for completion in 1992. Meanwhile, work is proceeding on production of the new suburban rail car bogies at Midland in preparation for electrification. This is the first time that these precision five-ton bogies have been built anywhere in the world. As each is completed, it's shipped to Maryborough in Queensland, where the contractors, a Sear Brown Bavari, attach it to the carriage. The first rail cars are scheduled to arrive in Perth in July for trial. There'll be a more detailed coverage of the construction of the bogies in the next edition of West Rail News. This edition, in place of our regular viewers' video segment, we look at the results of the news survey we conducted last program. The aim was to find out who watches the video, the segments you like and dislike, and any suggestions you may have about how it can be improved. First off, thanks for the response. We're happy to say most liked what we're doing. To the questions, are you happy with the current style, three quarters tick yes, while nine percent said no. As for the most popular segment, just over half like the general news, with 20 percent preferring district news. The least popular section, as the figures clearly show, has been the studio interview. You may have already noticed fewer of those appearing. There are many interesting and helpful comments on how the programs could be improved. We'd like to see video about gangs in the district. Possibly more depth in district news and activities. Maybe there could be a little bit more on district events. We do try and do as much district news as we can, but sending video crews to the country is very expensive. But we are working on ways to increase the amount of district news in the videos. And one of those would be through the viewer segments, although the survey showed that these were not all that popular. This could be because of the quality of the vision and of the information provided from which we write the scripts. But I think if we could improve both of those areas, then the viewer segment could become much more popular. After all, viewer segments are very big raters on TV at the moment. On the question of whether the videos are presented in an enlightening and informative way, nearly 80% said yes. Others disagreed. It's made by the bosses to try and hoodwink the workers into making them think the bosses care about us. Most of it seems to be a political soft soap brainwash. We try to strike a happy balance between Westrail policy and what's happening out in the workplace, but the survey plainly showed that people do want to know what management is planning. One survey answer, which is concerning Paul Byrne, how many staff actually see every video? Less than half of the people who answered the survey said they see every video. And 25% were less frequent viewers than that. 10% never see it. So I would ask management to try and make sure that the video is made available during work hours so those who want to see it can do so. Again, thanks to all those who responded to the survey. If you'd like a more detailed breakdown of the results, contact Ian Goldspink on PABX 2454 and he'll discuss them with you. If you have any suggestions on stories you would like to see or further suggestions on how to improve the shows, ring Ian or drop a note to Public Affairs, 6th Floor, West Rail Centre. And our regular viewer segment will return next edition. 
Quinana has been in the limelight again with the first industrial expo conducted by Quinana's Chamber of Commerce. Westrail was there in strength. Westrail recently took part in the Quinana Expo, the first industrial expo of its kind in WA. Organised by the Quinana Chamber of Commerce to highlight the role of industry in the area, the expo attracted a great deal of interest from industry representatives and the general public. Well, we've got a display down there that essentially points out uh, um, the way in which our transport links service the industry down there. Obviously, the industry needs raw materials and needs to transport the products uh, into and out of the region. And uh, we want to tell everybody, because we are proud of our role, uh, exactly what we do down there. And so we have constructed a display in the way of a fairly large map uh, showing what involvement we have, where our tracks go, where our services go, and also the industries that we serve. Westrail's display featured an impressive array of photographs of our operations in the area, highlighting the vital role played by rail transport in the region. We think that uh, uh, that sort of expense, it's a, a bit more like an investment, an investment for uh, attracting new business and an investment in education. Quinana area manager Brian Street was a key figure in organising and manning the display. The expo is planned to be an annual event and it is hoped that Westrail's key role in the region will be on display again next year. Remember the days when the only telephone available was standard black? These days telephones come in such a range of styles that choosing one can be a tough decision. But imagine Westrail's task with a complete telephone exchange and hundreds of telephones to choose. Their new telephone system was installed recently at head office. Here's Paul Byrne with the details. Radical changes are taking place in the basement of Westrail Centre. The maze of wires and relays chattering strange codes will soon be idle. The bulky racks of components will be removed and the machine that is the Ericsson 591 exchange will be no more. In its place will be a smarter, miniature MD-110 that will dramatically improve Westrail's telephone communications. Size-wise, that's the biggest, pro uh, biggest difference as far as we are concerned. But it's the uh, amount of things you can do with the new exchange that you couldn't do with the old one. There's hundreds and hundreds of different facilities that this can provide. The, s the speed of dialing is increased tremendously compared with the old one. We can use the modern push-button phones with this one, where, whereas the, the other one wouldn't accept that type of phone. Well, the extensions themselves can be arranged in groups so that if, if there was an office environment and one of the phones rang, anybody else could answer the phone from their phone without having to get up. It's completely congestion-free. Westrail's operators have received extensive training on the new switchboards, which use digital screens instead of the old light and button system. The new system means convenience and quicker response time throughout Westrail, and it'll give back a huge area of the basement for redevelopment. But what of the old exchange when its plug is finally pulled? We think it may have other ideas. Beware of strange phone calls in the middle of the night. Well, I'm certainly glad that I don't receive Westrail's phone bill. And that brings another edition of Westrail News Video to a close. To see us out, another look at the electrification safety campaign launch. MAGS received a lot of media attention, and Commissioner Jim Gill was there to lend a hand. I'll see you next time. Yes, it is a brand new system of trains, and to tell us about it, our special guest today, Dr Jim Gill. Good to be here, Keith. Now, okay. Mags gets into a little bit of strife in this story, but what's his message about our new train system? Well, the main thing to know about the new system, Keith, is that it's very, very safe, in fact, as long as everybody obeys the rules. It's going to be faster, cleaner, quieter, and a lot more comfortable. That's they right. They get one snap, they hoot. They sure do. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, 
the train driver might see you, but the thing to do is not to be there in the first yeah, place. Yeah, don't be there in the first place. That's, that's the important thing. Um, it will be very, very safe. Catching a train is safer than walking, Keith, but uh, not if you're playing near the tracks. No. And when are we going to see our first uh, electric train? First here? one's October this year. That'll be on the Armadale line. And then all three lines will be operating uh, electric trains by the end of next year. All righty. Well, Dr. Jim, thanks for coming along today. It's been a pleasure, Keith. Good stuff. Yep. All right. Good and to meet remember, you, Dr. Jim and Mags. Um, electrifying tail, keep away from the railway tracks. Not a safe place to be. You've got to be inside the train to be safe. Is that the thing? That's, That's it. it. Okay. okay. See you later. Come along, Mags, and read the sign. See that overhead power line. Leave it alone and you'll be fine. And you can keep on singing. Don't muck about by the railway tracks and you'll never have an accident. Like Mags, 